Welcome to Bold Guy DIY. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to take control or at least add control to your Arduino or ESP32 project. I'm building towards using joysticks to control a pan and tilt camera that I have on the horizon, but I realized as I was experimenting with different joysticks that there's a lot of things that we can explore and show how they work there might be a benefit to somebody else besides just me. So in this video, I'm gonna show you how to tackle a basic eight-way digital joystick and show you how you can use the four directions or the combination of two at a time together to produce both a static control and a dynamic control. And also I'll show you how to take an analog joystick, use the potentiometer settings of the X and Y travel to create both a static and variable control for a servo or anything else that you'd want to hook up. So if you want to know all about joysticks, let's get to it. The first joystick I'm going to be using is an eight-way arcade joystick. Now, obviously the four directions are up, down, left, right, but also accomplishes four more directions by combinations of two, like up, left, and down, right. If we take a look at the back of the controller, you can see a five pin connector, as well as the motion for the joystick. And if we take that plastic cover off the back, you can see that it's actually just four micro switches where the common pin and the normally open pin is brought out for each of those four directions. Here's a chart of the connections and you can see that the common for all of those four different directions is brought to one connection, one pin, and then the normally open side of each of those different directions is brought out to a pin as well. So five pins in total. And on the ESP32, I hooked that up to pins four, five, 18, and 19. The other joystick we're going to use is a simple analog joystick that I got from a cheap hobby kit. It's not the greatest, but it will show us the principles of how it works. And it's simply got, without the actual joystick rubber handle, you can see here that there's a little stick that gets moved around and that connects to three different devices. One potentiometer for each plane of travel. So one for the X left, right, and one for the Y up, down. And and then there's also a little momentary switch that's used if you push down on the joystick, it will also trigger this little momentary switch to signal some kind of control. This is also a five pin connector. And as you can see here, there's a ground pin, a power in, it's labeled five volts, but 3.3 works fine as well, which is the logic for the ESP32. And then there's one pin for a potentiometer in the X direction, one pin for the Y direction, and one pin for that momentary switch when you push down on the joystick. If we take a look at the code for the eight-way joystick, we find that we declare four pin variables and put the number of the pin that they're connected to beside them. Now, you don't have to get these right necessarily. I'll show you how to set it up so we can make sure that the different directions are assigned to the right pin. And then we also set up four more variables to store whether or not a switch is engaged. Under the setup loop, we start the serial monitor so we can track progress and print out messages. And then we're gonna declare the pin mode of each of those switches as being an input and being uh, pulled up, which means it's high if it's not pressed and low if it's pressed. And in our void loop, we're simply going to read all of the statuses of those pins into the values that store them. And then we're going to use the serial monitor printing in order to print out a value for each of those directions to see whether they are on or off. So it's simply going to print a one if it's high or unpressed, or it will print a zero if it's considered low or being pressed down. As you can see, the values start to populate the serial monitor. You can see that they all start with a value of one. And if we move the joystick to the different positions, you should start to see that as we press those directions, you do get a zero in the pin that it's currently configured to. However, you might need to go in and adjust those pin numbers if we've got some of them mixed up. If you have a wiring diagram for your joystick, that will really clear it up for you. In my case, I didn't, so it required a little bit of experimentation. After changing the pin numbers, run it again, and just continue to check that the different directions trigger the correct directions on the code and adjust them as necessary until you get left triggers the left, right, up, down, just as you would expect it to. The next step, if you comment out that first section like I did here, and I changed it now so that when it detects the low or the button press for each of those different directions, it will also print a message. And that message says, move left or move right, move up, move down, depending on which direction it detects. This would be your next step where you would now take the direction information and write it to a motor or servo in order to have it move in the direction that matches the movement of the joystick. 
The last stage of this is to add some variability to the control. If you hold it to the right, it's gonna increase a scaling factor. It's gonna count up according to the delay that you use. And by counting up, it's going to be able to create a scaling factor, which could be multiplied by the motor speed in order to make it go faster and faster the longer that you hold the joystick in that direction. Now, if you've ever programmed a clock or something like that with push buttons, you'll find the longer you hold the button, the faster the numbers move, and they work on a typical scaling factor like this. We need four more variables in order to store the value of the timers. As it runs, the longer you hold the joystick in a particular direction, the higher the counter is going to count. And that number could now be multiplied by the motor speed or the number of degrees that you're changing or the, you know, how fast something's blinking to make it go faster and faster as you go. Now that last little bit of code I used there, which also resets it if it detects that it's no longer going that direction is really important. Otherwise, it'll get faster and faster and faster every time you return to the same direction instead of starting back over from that slow speed and then building up in speed as you hold it longer in that direction. When you release, go back to that direction again, it will start from the slow and then ramp up again. If we were to take that out and comment it out, that last little bit where it resets those timers, then you'll see that even as we, as we load the serial monitor, you'll see that when we go in a particular direction, it starts to count up. If we let go and come back to it, it'll pick back up where it left off. Again, if you were using that as a multiplying factor for speed, you would find that it would get faster and faster and faster, and it would never slow back down again. By having it reset back to zero, every time you release the joystick in that direction, it causes it to ramp up properly each time. Now let's take a look at the code in order to run the analog joystick. Now the analog joystick is only going to use three different variables. That is the X pin, the Y pin, and the switch pin. So the direction for the left, right is the X, up, down is the Y, and then the switch pin is a momentary switch. We also need three values in order to store the position along the X and Y axis, as well as whether or not the switch is on. The setup loop is very similar to the first. We only need to declare the switch pin as a pin mode. And then in the loop function, we're going to see that we need to read with the analog read command, the X and Y value. We're also just going to print out those three values in three different columns. So the first value is the X the second column is the Y value, and the third column tells us whether or not the joystick button is pushed. If we see here that we move it all the way to the left, we get a zero. We move it all the way to the right, and we get 4095, which is the highest value because of the resolution of the analog input. If we move it all the way up, we get zero. And if we move it all the way down, we get again 4095 because of the resolution of the analog input. Using the values in these X and Y columns, we can start to build a table for what the range is in order to push the joystick to the left, what the range is for it to sit in the center position. You'll notice that it's not to the exact same value every time, but there's a little bit of, of a range or discrepancy there. Tolerance. And in every direction, you can see what values are basically considered uh, left, right, up, or down. The left for my particular joystick goes between zero to about 1456. So I'm gonna set the max for the left at about 1440 so that I don't have any false uh, movements to the left, up, zero to 1870, etc., etc. Your own joystick is going to have different values and a more expensive joystick is probably more evenly balanced between the left and the right or the up and the down, but these are the values that I found for my own. Now, when you start to build functions for yourself, you can see here, if we comment out my original code and then, and then activate the second part, I set up a bunch of if statements using those values that I found in my table. So if it's less than 1440, it's going to display it as moving left. And if it's above 1485, it's going to display it as moving to the right. If the value is under 1935, it's going to say that that Y value is up. And likewise, if it's above the right value, it's gonna say that that's down. Using that, it's very simple to see that if you want basic joystick control, you would just set those if statements to the correct values, tweak them a little bit if necessary, and you would have a basic up, down, left, right. It's very similar to what you have with the eight-way joystick and combinations of the diagonals as well. When you get into variable control, you do get a lot more flexibility with the analog joystick though, because the analog joystick can be mapped so that those ranges we found for left could be mapped to scaling factors. 
as I upload the code here and we take a look at it, you can see that I mapped the 0 to 1440 on the x-axis to minus 10 to minus 1. So that means the further I move it to the left, the more extreme the value is to a maximum of minus 10 and a minimum of minus 1. If I move it all the way up, you can see a maximum of minus 10 and a minimum of minus 1. And then, of course, it goes back to the center. Same thing with the right to a maximum of 10 and down to a maximum of 10 as well. And you multiply them with the speed or the number of degrees you're going to affect you'll find that the more extreme movements you make, the faster your motor would turn or the more quickly your servo would pivot, all of those things because you're using a scaling factor to bring in variable control. As you can see a little more clearly here, I've mapped each of those values. They've worked to a different scale and you can adjust that minus five to minus one, three to one, whatever scaling factor you need and mapping it to the range for the different directions causes it to scale the travel or the speed or whatever it is you're measuring with the joystick and gives you more variability. Here, here I've commented out the Y values because I'm only gonna use one servo for the sake of demonstration. But as I upload the code and actually try it out, you, you can see that when I move the joystick slightly, I get slower speed than when I move the joystick drastically. The more drastically I move it, the quicker it is, and the more lightly or slightly that I move it, the, the slower that travel is. You can see I need a little more calibration in order to get it perfect, but you get the basic idea. By adding that variability, by mapping those ranges to a set of values, you then get the ability to control things, not just at the same speed, but at whatever speed you would like with a lot more control. So there's what I think is most everything you would need to know in order to use a joystick, whether digital or analog, in an Arduino or ESP32 uh, microcontroller project. If you've got any other questions that I didn't answer, feel free to leave a comment or send me an email and I'll do my best to answer them for you. This is just the beginning, of course, because once you can control and direct the motion of a joystick, you can hook it up to almost anything in order to get an output anything from lights or sounds, all the way to motors, servos, and anything else that you can dream up. If you like these kinds of videos and you find them helpful, give the video a like, subscribe to the channel, and check back weekly as I post a new video every Saturday morning. Send me an email or follow me on Twitter. My information's in the description below. And tell your friends and family about it. I always love to see new faces, new names, subscribing as we go. Thank you to everyone that subscribed so far. I really appreciate it. And it's great to feel that I'm making a difference when you send those emails and ask me for project files or 3D printed models. I really enjoy doing that and making a tiny bit of difference out there in the big world of YouTube. Until next time, in all your DIY projects, jump for joy a little and don't be afraid to be balder.